Hi there everyone, and we've talked about ozone already under air pollution. It's a gas you've probably heard of before. We're going to now talk about it in a little bit more detail in terms of what it does for us and to us. So our basic understanding of ozone is that it's a form of oxygen that absorbs ultraviolet light from the sun, but it's also poisonous to our bodies. It's pure oxygen, but it's not O2, oxygen gas. Instead, it is O3. So UV light is blocked by ozone, and UV light is high energy light coming from the sun. It's the same kind of energy as normal light, it's just electromagnetic energy, but our eyes cannot detect it, we have just not evolved to detect those frequencies, so they are invisible to us. Infrared is similar, but lower energy, so it is not dangerous in the same way, but they are both invisible forms of light just outside the range that we can detect. Infra, by the way, from Latin means below, and ultra, also from Latin, means beyond. So that is how the names have come to be. All UV is not the same. There are actually four different types. Yes, we are subcategorizing. You might have seen this coming. We break them down on frequency or wavelength, which is proportional to frequency or one over frequency. If we look at the ultraviolet range, UVA is closest to visible light, 400 to 315 nanometers. A nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters. And it can cause minor sunburn after a long time, but it's not really a problem. UVB is what causes sunburn and kills sensitive creatures in the sea if they're not protected. This is also what the ozone layer protects us from. UVC, it's high altitude UV and it damages DNA and skin rapidly. It's very harmful. And then there's vacuum UV, which is the very high energy rays found in space. It's absorbed by nitrogen and so as 80% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, it's not considered a problem. So now we can see why the ozone layer is so important. It's around 20 to 40 kilometers up in the lower stratosphere, and it's just a region of higher ozone concentration. You can see a plot here of ozone concentration, that is the yellow line. So you might think there's a lot of ozone up there, but that depends on your definition of a lot. In every million molecules of air in the ozone layer, about two to eight of them will be ozone molecules. That's it. About 90% of the ozone in the atmosphere found in this region. So you can see again how very small changes in concentrations of the atmospheric gases can have relatively large effects on the Earth systems overall. So if we look at the graph again, the different types of UV are coming in from the top. UVC comes in and is very quickly absorbed. It is absorbed by normal O2 and as soon as it hits the ozone layer, it is all removed from the atmosphere. UVB is absorbed quickly by ozone and around 80 to 90% of it is blocked by the time it reaches the ground. UVB is what gives us sunburn. Imagine how bad your sunburn would be if that whole green bar reached the ground. And then finally, UVA is mostly unaffected by ozone. Most of the UVA that enters the atmosphere actually seems to reach the ground. But fortunately for us, it's the safest kind. So what is all the fuss about chemicals and the ozone layer? Well, many manufactured chemicals, especially the one we talked about, CFCs, that are used in fridges and aerosol sprays, react with ozone, or at least they can react with ozone in the right conditions, perhaps with sunlight or extra energy added. 
So if these chemicals get into the atmosphere and they drift up to the stratosphere, then they can react there and steal ozone from our sun shield. CFCs in particular have a very long lifetime in the atmosphere. They don't react easily, so they are often able to float up high in this time. As we said, CFCs were banned in aerosols but are still used in fridges and some other processes. They are due to be phased out in all countries around the world by 2030. So what happens to you when this radiation hits your skin? How does UV light do damage to organic systems? Well, radiation is energy. And when energy hits cells, or when it hits molecules that make up cells, it can damage them. Often, electrons are blasted away from a molecule, and that creates a free radical. There is an electric charge on the molecule, so it can react with nearby molecules and nearby cells. Sometimes, it can reprogram a cell. It can reprogram the DNA of a cell to reproduce uncontrollably. This is what we call cancer, when a cell just reproduces over and over and creates a growth that the rest of the body cannot survive. There are obviously less serious forms of cell damage caused by UV light, and sunburn is one of these. So we need to talk about the substance melanin, and this is a chemical which affects skin color. Skin color determines how we are affected by UV radiation. All skin types produce dark pigment, this is melanin, when exposed to UV light. And this means that we have adapted, we've evolved to produce more defenses to harmful radiation when there's more of it around. Melanin absorbs solar radiation because it is dark in color and it stops it from penetrating the skin. So we've evolved to develop a suntan when we find ourselves receiving a lot of solar radiation. Some people who their ancestors live near the equator where there is a lot of solar radiation have evolved to be dark skinned all the time. So they have a lot of this pigment and a lot of defense against UV radiation. And that is the basis of a difference in skin color. It depends where your ancestors lived and how much solar radiation they received. So very quickly, let's go again over tropospheric ozone. Can you remember what tropospheric ozone is? Well, our car engines burn fuel at very high pressures. This is what leads to the production of pollutants, oxides of nitrogen. Different chemicals can be produced in a reaction, or a different reaction can happen when you explode things at very high pressures or temperatures. And so you get these nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere, and as we saw in the air pollution section, this can lead to O2 getting changed into O3 with the addition of sunlight and some other catalysts. And what this means is you get more O3 at low levels in the troposphere around the ground. Now, there is a need for some ozone in the troposphere, and it's an important part of the biosphere, but too much of it can be a problem. And especially if you condense it in a small area like a city, so this kind of problem is not just limited to the cities. The creation of low-level ozone is relatively slow, and so these air masses which contain the pollutants can drift away from city centers, and this can lead to high levels of pollutants being deposited in other non-urban areas. If people breathe in ozone, it can react with the blood and prevent it from carrying oxygen. This leads to people's brains and other organs getting less oxygen, and that can lead to health problems. It causes problems for asthmatics as well. It can irritate breathing and cause other chest problems. So, we've had another little look at ozone and the way that it interacts with UV. That's all we need to say about air pollution now. 
and next time we'll start looking at water pollution but bye bye for now